Welcome to This Week in Hospitality Marketing, the podcast show number 411 with your host, Lauren Gray. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Hospitality Marketing, the podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Gray, and this is episode number 411. So each week, we spend around 20 to 30 minutes sharing the most interesting tools, news, and techniques being used in marketing for the hospitality industry. Let's do a quick recap of our weekly live TV show this week in hospitality marketing, which airs every Friday at 1130 a.m. Eastern U.S. time on the Hospitality Channel TV station. So with that, let's get started. And now, today's new resource tool. So in commensurate to today's date, which is close to the end of June, and that we're going to be soon going off the cliff of UA's conclusion and GA4's inception, we have but one tool to discuss today, which I think will be the most helpful. And I didn't want to clutter it with other variations, other options, other things you should do. We've been kind of beating that horse for a while now. Um, It's really just one tool to be as clear as possible that if you haven't done anything for GA4 yet, you need to, because at the end of this month, it gets uh, universal analytics gets turned off in part mostly caveat asterisk everything that you're aware of as a general user gets shut off some aspects do stay residual for legacy data but they're very centric sorry that's a rabbit hole and a tangent but we do have one tool today that we want to talk about and that is tagmate.app t a g m a t e . a p p tagmate.app is a WYSIWYG insertion capability of you defining your new measurement aspects to GA4. As we've talked about, GA4 is much different, very different than Universal Analytics on their session-based tracking, cookie-based tracking, and so forth. Uh, GA4, as we said, is omnipotently tracking when it comes to data. You have to define then what it is you're wanting to track from all of the data that it collects. And it's uh, Google's like, hey, default, your account's going to go dead if you haven't seen that red banner on the top of your analytics recently, which you should have if you've visited analytics anytime in the past four months. It says, hey, this is not new GA4. Click this and we'll do it for you, but you need to get onto a GA4 account. Some people were ahead of it where they went over and started GA4 accounts, so at least it was running in parallel to collect data because it's only goes back 14 months. Tagmate helps you do the transition better than the default function that Google has. You will follow the guidelines within Tagmate, but the idea of it is is that it will help you convert your current Universal Analytics account to at least an operating GA4 account, and then you can define with Tagmate's Tagmate's WYSIWYG functionality aspects that you would like to maintain measurement for, kind of the old goals and events kind of perspective to things, not that they're goals and events. So the tool itself, Tagmate, is a wonderful gap point for those that either don't have a very robust agency relationship, don't have an agency, uh, are all internal, but this is not their forte. They need something that can help them hold their hand, go through the process, other than Google's automated, static, not very helpful transitional tools. Uh, for this because hospitality is unique as any industry is unique with some things but it's not e-commerce so it's not following the same things now there are things that tagmate aren't is not going to be able to help you with and that will be your booking engine tracking uh, you'll have to understand what it means to put third party cookie over oh, third party cookie third party tracking that GA4 understands in your booking engine, how to actually put GA4 into your booking engine. That is going to be more centric to your booking engine that you use online than it is about something like Tagmate helping you. But the benefit of Tagmate is it will get everything up to the doorstep of that so that you know that your site is being tracked for certain things. And now you need to go into your booking engine to better define what those things are. So keeping with just the single tool, clear picture of asset value of this, Tagmate dot app is our tool of the week now for this week's hospitality technique so our technique discussion very centric to our tool and being only an only tool means we're going to deal with one very key element to this and our talk our technique text discussion this week is big data the day the buzzword went main street and i say that because we are now rolling into what has been jibber jabbered from stages and platforms and webinars for the past three years four years really uh and that is big data what are we going to do with it there's all this data we can access all this data but nobody outside of the buzzwordiness of saying what the world's going to change like with it has really 
implemented it well. Yeah, of course, there's large scale platforms that have been cultivating their ability to aggregate massive amounts of data. Um, you look at the sales forces of the world, the hub spots of the world, and the CRM databases that say, oh, we'll pull this data and we'll pull that data and we'll do this, we'll do that. Adobe, uh, AWS, uh, Google, BigQuery. Um, these are all huge data aggregation places. You, you talk to people that about data lakes and data reservoirs, you know, snowplow and how to do this and so forth. It's wonderful to think if you could keep your own data on your own servers, it's your asset, it's your content. The cost and scale of that is pretty high, not to mention the tangible operations requirements uh, of doing that. You're, you're, you're maintaining your own hardware at that point. You're not buying space on somebody else's maintained system. You're having to make sure that you have all the things that you need to actually house and hold and secure the data with all the legalities associated with that. So that's a very big task. So that's why large organizations like AWS can charge large amounts of money to maintain and aggregate your data or platforms like Salesforce or HubSpot uh, that, that will say, yes, we'll handle and facilitate all the organization capabilities of the data, but it's going to cost you to be able to access it and use it. That's why the prices are so high. BigQuery is probably one of the most affordable, which is from Google. No reason not to believe that they are doing this. So eventually later, they, of course, have access to even more things. But BigQuery for them is actually on a token basis, pretty affordable. It is also when it comes to all the data that you're now going to be accumulating off your website with the new GA4 usage, which most of the world will be doing because it is being offered as free, which is why Google was there with Universal Analytics to begin with, is already ingrained with what GA4 gathers. You just simply have to pay for the additional space to maintain data past the default 14 months of data that Google will ma maintain for you for your GA4 free account. You want to keep more than 14 months of data. And we've had many discussions as to the value proposition of having that length of historical data. More than just forensic reporting, as we've talked about before, but also the ability to reassess and ask different questions of the data. Because with the GA4 data, as it, it gathers all the data sources that it can, sometimes a question that you're asking now is good, but there's a better question in the future when you begin to see more data to ask better questions. It's a progression, a growth of your questions that you ask uh, data. So. If you, like with the old Universal that we're currently wrapping up at the end of this month, if you uh, didn't ask the question to track a goal or set an event, then if you you go to back and look at those things, you have no information. You actually have to set up the goal and event, and from that point forward, the data begins to get measured that you asked to get measured. With GA4, it's good in the sense that the data was already collected. You just have to go back into the pot and decide what it is you want from it. What information do I need from this? And so you can ask better questions later, and you want that historical data to go back far enough that it isn't some abstract lockdown year for COVID or you know, tsunami revenge travel in the summers and all the things that skew your year over year data, it'd be nicer to have a longer spread of data that you can draw from to have better insights that the data can provide you now that it's capable. Well, you need storage for that. BigQuery is very good. Like I said, it's affordable for it. It connects right to Google. It does take a skilled hand to connect that. The tool that I'm talking about with TagMate does allow you the ability to connect to a BigQuery account. Making a BigQuery account is not hard. You know, basically, they have to set up a method of payment for it, and it's very cheap. I think one terabyte of token is uh, five bucks or five cents. Five cents. Uh, and it goes on for five dollars. Sorry, I'm getting a bit confused. Five dollars. Sorry. Um, so it's not super expensive and for the data that it collects and stores and holds for. Plus, also, with the ability for uh, people or other platforms to connect to BigQuery via APIs and so forth, and... Um, uh, Python controls and so forth, you're able to uh, help a lot with your uh, dashboard loads and things and other ways of extrapolating the data or even uh, adding other aspects of data that you might want to correlate with the data you're collecting from your website. Don't want to go too much on a tangent. That that's more advanced conversations than what the purpose of our TagMate discussion today is. TagMate is a great last minute, if you haven't already done it, means to better define your GA4 tracking capabilities once UA Universal Analytics goes dark at the end of this month. And when I say that big data, the day of the buzzword finally hits Main Street is now going forward as of July 1st forward, you're going to have more data than you're actually using for your reports. And one of the largest things that you're going to have to reconsider is, am I looking at the right data the same way, the right way? 
is, is, is there a better way of looking at my data? Is there more that the data can tell me than what I'm asking of it? And that's because now you have such a wide range of asking questions because all the data is being gathered for you off your site. You have to define what it is you'd like to know what that data can t show you. You know, it's just not funnels of they went here, then they went here, then they clicked here. But why did they come to here? What did they do in relationship to the other aspects that they connected with? And what is the the distrib uh, the attribution string of this that's beyond first click or last click, but the actual attribution over the entire spectrum of connectivities that Google now knows in their data layering that GA4 does? That's the powerful parts of all this. This is where that big data component of it being buzzwordy, uh, you know, webinar headlining stuff these past few years to being a reality of our daily lives now. Big data usage, the ability to look at mass sums of data and understand the relationships with all the other data points you have is a real and functioning usable thing, especially as we're talking more and more about AI, which is the new shiny object buzzword that we're dealing with. We've had those discussions and we'll continue to have those discussions as time goes on. So there you have it, our technique this week, big data. The day the buzzword went Main Street. Now, this week's hospitality news that you should know. So our news and show review. Our live show today was the coming dark age of analytics. I say that tongue in cheek, but unfortunately, regrettably, more uh, there'll be more realism to it than I, uh, than I actually am probably foreboding. There is a huge amount of people, and I know this from a first hand from all those that are now asking, uh, that are wondering why they, you know, they want to get on the ark. <laughs> it's raining and they want to get on the ark. Um, they're realizing that what they kicked the can down the road a year and a half ago, that they didn't include in last year's budget because it was next year's concern, that they didn't ap appropriate monies or ask for their third party agency to make sure that things were set or made. Or if they did ask their third parties, they didn't clarify of whether the third parties did it correctly or did it in the way that was going to be most beneficial to them or bought a bad bill of goods from a poor vendor, whatever it is. At the end of this month, it's going to change for them. Because if they haven't set up, if you haven't set up GA4 on your website with proper identifiers as to what you're wanting to see as data from your website, July 1st is going to be a really interesting day for you uh, and forward more. Actually, I would have to say August 1st will be more of an exciting day for you because you'll look at July numbers and not have numbers. And if you do have any data, if you did a last minute flip over to GA4, you're not going to have any real year over year data. There will be some legacy crossover, but they're not, the numbers aren't going to match because how they're being measured has changed as of July 1st. So even though you may have similarities as to sessions or visitors or what impressions or whatever, the, those numbers won't even match, number one. And number two, what you learn from them isn't going to make the same sense as what you used to ask of them prior to GA4 being the analytics platform that the data is being collected on. So you're going to go through a, a heavy shift. If you're an agency and you haven't done this to your, to your, for your clients, a uh, big, huge shame on you. If you were beating your head on the wall because you kept telling the clients they needed to do it and they didn't do it, well, then you get to go over and wave a flag of, a flag of I told you so. Um, for everybody else that couldn't fit it in their budget or kick the can down the road or not my job or, you know, that's somebody else's worry, you know what? Everybody's going to realize just how bad that decision was as they begin to realize they don't have the data to back up their spends, their results, their revenues, whatever have you. That data is going to get confusing at best and more likely dark for most. So that was our, that was our biggest talk about the live show. I wasn't doing, trying to be as much gloom and doom about it, but I really do feel from all the dialogues that I'm having first person with a lot of different companies, their questions, their panics, their lack of concerns, their we're fine, but then when I go look, they're not fine <laughs> uh, kind of stuff. We're going to have a, a kind of a, a reckoning come this summer for July and August as to what people begin to really realize is their data collection what it's doing for them, what it's not doing for them, and what they should have done or didn't do about it. And uh, again, our live show, we went into details about certain things to look for, certain ways to look at it, things that you should and can do now in case you didn't do something then. We broke it down a little bit more into detail as some of the action items that you can count on that you're within two weeks, week and a half of uh, this change. So that was our live show. And that was the coming dark ages of analytics. Um, 
we kind of wrapped up our news uh, conversation in the live show a little bit about the sunsetting of universal analytics, the politics around it per se, the the destruction of, of third party cookies, the first off the walls that were created with third party cookies, and then the softening from Google that they realized it was going to hurt too much of their financial bottom line uh, by being too adamant about the third party cookie de- destruction. So they they stretched that time level out. Uh, I, iOS 17's announcement that they're going to restrict even farther the acknowledgement or usability of tracking data like Google Analytics on their iOS platforms down to seven day cookie life. So instead of the 28 days track anything and everything mentality, it's down to seven days, which means you have less of a window of understanding the behavior and patterns and engagements on the iOS platforms. And as Zuckerberg painfully found out when he dismissed the change in iOS 14 as being only 11% of his user base, but it was almost 60% of his purchase base. So big, huge difference for him when he realized that, yes, the numbers were small, but mighty. Um, So we're going to have more of those effects on our ability to get the data, see the data, and use the data than we've had before. So the sunsetting of universal analytics, the third-party cookies, it's not as dramatic in the tracking processes now as it will be in the future. I mean, iOS 17 obviously is going to accelerate it from the iOS side, Apple for those I'm referring to. And of course, whether Google sticks to its guns this time, that 2025 will be the conclusion of third-party cookie allowances. Um, there was some idea that they might shorten it, but that seemed to have quietly gone away. There has been other discussions about extending it. That seems to still be around. But 2025 is still the golden gate of whether or not they actually to, truly follow through with what has happened with Firefox, with uh, Microsoft, uh, Edge, what uh, iOS Safari already is doing. Um, Google's the last huge uh, gorilla in the room hand uh, holdout on truly crushing the third-party cookie process. So we'll see how that works. So there you have it. Remember, you can find us on Google Play, Apple, iTunes, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify, Pandora. The list goes on 39 platforms and counting. We're even on Amazon's Alexa, Google Assistant, and Siri. Simply ask any of them to play the Hospitality Marketing Podcast. And of course, no matter which one you may use, if you like our show, please hit the... Um, the rating, you know, rate us, give us a comment that helps others find our comment content. Uh, obviously, if this is your first time finding us. Please, by all means, hit the subscribe button on whatever platform you discovered us on. Um, and give us feedback. You can write to me at any time, Lauren at hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com. I answer each and every email related to the live show as well as the podcast. If you want to be a little bit more audio about it or be joining the show by it, go to hdm.news forward slash talkback. And there I have a question of the week that I pop up that's usually related to our podcast or live show and an open ability for you to add content or comments that you would like. Um, And then you give me permissions of whether I can ask the question or make the statement that you gave, quote you on it, or actually add your audio to the shows. We do that from time to time as well. And of course, uh, all of our podcasts, all of our live shows are for in our Forever I Love Lucy reruns on the hospitalitychannel.tv website. Uh, Of course, our live show is broadcasted in 209 countries on your Roku TV, Amazon TV, Apple TV, Google TV, Samsung TV. Just look for the Hospitality Channel. And the show is always on the free side of that pay gateway. And we also, for my hospitality marketing peers, can join the hospitalitymarketing.club where we have peer level engagement for hospitality marketing. So with that, oh, don't forget our live show is always broadcast 1130 a.m. on uh, the Hospitality Channel TV, and you can catch us 11.30 a.m. on Fridays, and we're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, and everything else. So with that, my name is Lauren Gray. Thank you for the privilege of your time, and I look forward to talking to you next week. You have been listening to This Week in Hospitality Marketing, the podcast show 411, brought to you by Hospitality Digital Marketing and in support of the HSMAI, Hospitality Sales and Marketing Association International, all right reserved copyright 2020.